the year running around. A little bit of a streak of doing um, triceps and biceps, not like supersetted, like not doing each set immediately after the other, but doing a set of triceps, you know, resting, catching my breath, and then doing a set of buys, right? And then just repeating that process until I feel like both my triceps and my buys are done. But, I don't know. I don't know if I think that's the best method. I will say this though, it does always let me finish the lift with a complete arm pump. Because you gotta remember, when I do all of triceps first, and then all of biceps, and then you know, go to the mirror, take my shirt off, pose down. My biceps are fully pumped, but my triceps, the pump has kind of diminished a little bit over the course of the bicep portion of the workout. So doing a back and forth style, like a supersetted workout in a way, by the time both my tricep and my biceps are fully pumped, that's when I'm posing down. So my arms look as crazy as ever, or as crazy as they ever do, which I do like. And I do think it is definitely stimulating them because I'm still doing, you know, eight, seven or so working sets followed by, or not followed by, but, and I feel nice and fatigued. I feel super pumped. So that's pretty much what I'm looking for. But part of me also likes doing all of triceps and then all of biceps just so I can focus on one muscle group at a time and really give it my you know, complete attention. So. I'm not going to say one method is absolutely superior to the other. And if you're just kind of a regular lifter, or not a regular lifter, but let's say, you know, bodybuilder style lifter, I think it's going to benefit you to try different workouts every so often. I'm not saying you have to absolutely shock the muscle, per se. But if you do the same workout every time, not it's not like I'm going to say you're going to get used to it, right? Fucking power lifters get pretty strong doing 3 by 5 for you know, eight months straight, doing the same kind of body parts, or not the same body parts, but the same basic workouts, you know, still gives them results because they're pushing themselves progressively harder. But if you keep doing the same workout over and over and over again, I do think you could kind of start to develop, let's just say potentially like gaps in, you know, what parts of your build you're hitting, you know, like let's say just as a really extreme example that someone for their back day, they only did lat pull downs. That's all they did. The whole back day was lat pull downs. They did eight sets, they left. Their sets could have been hard, and their lats would be pumped, but they are missing out on their sort of mid traps. Right? So that's obviously an example where somebody is definitely missing out on muscle groups. But you know, let's just say even intra muscular, like or just your chest. If all you ever do is flat bench, and maybe like decline press, you're going to be missing out on your upper chest, you know? So training variability, not only do I think it's going to have a you know, higher rate of... Well, it's just going to give you different stimuluses. That's all I'm trying to say. And I think hitting something from every angle is probably going to give you better results than just doing it the exact same way every time. And you're going to be less likely to run into plateaus that way, too. Right? Everybody loves bringing up the... Uh, like, what's the definition of insanity? Right? It's doing the same thing over and over and over and over again and expecting a different result. So if you're completely plateaued, uh, you can't seem to put on weight, I think your issue is more than likely diet. You need to eat more food. But it could also be training. You know, If you have been doing the exact same routine, even though I think you could do the same routine and make steady progress, if you've been doing the exact same thing and you can tell... Or maybe you can't tell that your intensity has kind of flattened out. Like every lift is the exact same, you know, moderate intensity of the last one. Uh, I mean, you got to remember, building muscle is much more difficult than maintaining it. But that being said, even though it is harder, the difference in your intensity, it doesn't necessarily have to be huge. Right? Like a guy could be training next to another dude. And let's say that other guy next to him, let's say guy number B, guy letter B, he, he pushes every set two reps harder than the guy next to him. 
and maybe they started off at the exact same size and weight. You know, I think that guy who's pushing it harder, even though they could be eating the same amount of calories and like calories in, calories out, everything else, the guy who's training harder, I'm going to say he is going to get better results 99 out of 100 times, at least. So I think that's all i got to say there. But arms, you know, standard shit. Pushdowns, rope. Uh, there's no dip machine at this gym, which kind of sucks, but what are you going to do? And then buys will just be a variety of curls. I act, well, Actually, that's not true. It will be a variety of curls, but I'm also going to add some bicep biased cable pull downs. I'll get into those later. That's kind of a... So let me just sort of do a whole little recap. If you've ever heard people say that, you know, chin-ups are a really good bicep builder, right? I've heard that before. And a couple of years ago when I heard people say that, you know, when I heard that, I'm like, ugh, that's fucking stupid. That's a back, that's a back exercise, right? If I want bigger biceps, I want to do fucking bicep curls. You know, I kind of had a little bit of a closed mentality about it. But as of late, after actually trying them now, you know, you bring like a bench or an exercise block to a cable stack, put the cable stack at the top notch, at a straight bar and you can go pretty heavy you're pretty strong on this right underhand sort of you're doing a pull down action but you have to imagine that you're doing a curl like you have to somehow do a pull down but all biceps and it feels fucking sweet so again not only is it just another you know hard set and a set that i like you know i can actually squeeze my shit get super pumped get really fatigued so i just like the set well, as I'm sure you know, since you know the order in which these workouts are, today was supposed to be a leg day, but I feel kind of fucking scrappy to the point where, or not just I feel scrappy, but I can tell my legs are still kind of fatigued and not in a way in which I'm like, eh, hey, whatever, we'll just push through it. So I'm not going to make it a rest day, of course. Whenever I think that I need an extra day and I kind of delay a lift, that's usually when I throw in some, I mean, all bodybuilding workouts are in a sense accessory work, right? You're just hitting every muscle group directly. So I guess you can almost say it's all accessory work, but none of it's accessory work. I guess if you're a power lifter, you'd say it's all accessory work. But on days where I want to delay a lift, like let's say, Today was supposed to be a chest day, but I could still kind of tell I'm kind of sore from the last chest day. Same thing with anything. Usually my sort of, let's just say, uh, protocol is push that lift back a day and do a smallish muscle group or, you know, could just do a rest day. But I'm not really in the mood for an actual straight up rest day. Uh, not that I ever am, but... I feel good, it's just I can tell a leg day right now would probably not be awesome. So doing legs tomorrow, after another good night's rest and a bunch of food, I think it'll be better for me. That's something which I've kind of, well, I'm not going to say it's necessarily, well, yeah, I would say it is better. When I was an earlier lifter, um, I was a bit more boneheaded in my approach, where it's like, I don't care if my legs are still sore from the last leg day, I'm still just going to hit them regardless or, you know, whatever else. Like, if I feel like total shit, hit the lift. And in a way, I mean, I still do feel that way. Of course, I'm still going to go to the gym any means necessary, barring, you know, crazy fucking sickness or just unfortunate scheduling conflicts. Uh, but as I've evolved as a lifter, over the past few years, I think I've gotten a little bit of a better grasp on the fact that, you know, some days pushing off a lift for another day, adding a rest day, it is beneficial if necessary, right? Now, taking rest days just every week on a pre-programmed amount, well, I haven't done it this whole time. You know, beginner lifter five-ish years ago, a little more than five years ago to now, never been a huge rest day fan, but I'm not knocking them. I'm just saying I haven't done it. 
you know, that's a, that's another thing which, there's a few different styles of training that I need to at least try out, you know, just because since I haven't really done it before, I could be missing out, right? And those two things are, the two main things there are, <sighs> after that yawn, rest days on a consistent basis, like a rest day a week, a rest day maybe twice a week, you know, see what happens, as well as, you know, trying an actual bodybuilder diet, you know, just straight up rice, chicken, you know, purely filling up the tank with the, with the basics, no treats. Now, I'm a little bit less inclined to do that because, I mean, this whole time that I've been gaining muscle, that's the way I've kind of gone about it, you know? So, in a sense, it's like, if it works, it works. But I'm definitely not saying it's the best approach. I'm not saying I know what the best approach is, per se. It's just something that I've been doing, which has been giving me results, so I don't really see a reason to completely hit the brakes and do a 180. But don't worry. I will do it eventually. I'm sure I'll have a few months of, you know, actual bodybuilder bulk diet. Just not yet. I'm too attached to, uh, to my treats. But since today's not going to be a leg day, what am I going to do instead? I think just shoulders and, uh... Ah, shoulders and forearms. I don't really hit shoulders on a super consistent basis because they're they're pretty developed but I do throw them in every so often at I mean it's not like they're ever gonna shrink so it's not necessarily for maintenance uh, even if they're too big I wouldn't mind if they get a little bit bigger from hitting them every you know, maybe every other week every week and a half or so and then forearms everybody can use bigger forearms right out of um, I can, well, I can say this with certainty. You are not Lee Priest or Ramon, right? Your forearms are not absolutely freakish. So, you know, every so often, I used to do forearms every arm day. I've kind of chilled out since they're relatively proportional now, but maybe I should add some more in. Who doesn't love having a big fucking BB forearm? <sighs> but... <clears throat> my approach with forearms and shoulders has been pretty simple and that may just be due to the fact that I've never really had a problem growing them with basic shit you know all I'm going to do for shoulders is a variety of lateral raises and uh, maybe reverse pec deck maybe uh, face pulls you know whatever anything which I can feel my rear delts flex and I can really squeeze hard and load them up I'm going to like and then same thing with side delts you know be it Dumbbell lateral raises, cable, fucking machine lateral raises. Uh, you got to remember, no matter what movement you're doing, uh, you got to break it down to its core component. All you're doing is going from here to here with load. So, whichever ma whichever machines you like doing, I say just spam them. And then you know, same thing with forearms. I uh, I'm really not a believer. And hitting your forearms like on back day like oh well I want bigger forearms so I just won't use straps on back day that'll be enough for me you know look I can understand why people love saying that because a lot of I mean a lot of really big dudes I'm talking big-ass bodybuilders never train their forearms and they're fucking huge you also got to remember there's other things at play but look, you got to look at it from your own perspective are your forearms you know, as big as you would like them to be? If they're not, then you know, treat them like any other muscle group. And if you want them to grow, you got to hit them directly, right? If you want a bigger chest, what are you going to do? Right? You're going to hit it directly. Bench, flies, cable press. If you want bigger lats, pull downs. Right? So if you want bigger forearms, right, what do you got to do? Forearm curls. I usually like... Well, I won't get into the specifics of it. We'll just talk about it when we do it later. But there's no reason to overcomplicate it. I think especially with smaller muscle groups, 
Uh, if you find a couple of movements which you know, work and hit the targeted muscle that you're aiming for, then you don't really have to add too much variability, right? Chest, back, legs, they're a bit more complex. You know, chest, you've got pressing and flying, right? Your back, you have pull downs, rows and pullovers, legs, squats, leg extensions, uh, sissy squats, you know, you can hit your quads in all sorts of different ways. But when it comes to like your triceps and your fucking, your biceps, your shoulders, your forearms, you know, what are you really doing? Biceps here, triceps, here, you know, forearms, right there, and then for the back, you know, something like that. So, I'm not saying just do one movement for everything and just, like, spam it, but it might not be the absolute worst idea if those movements feel good. One of my buddies sent a, uh, sent me a buy one, get one free Subway footlong uh, DoorDash code, so... I've got two turkey subs waiting for me. Now, not necessarily the most highly calorically dense meal, uh, but I do just like them. And a foot long with the bread, it's about 80 grams of carbs each. You know, maybe eh, in both of them, probably 30 grams of protein. I mean, it is kind of like deli turkey subway protein, so not as good as like a beef or something, but kind of just like that as a treat. You know, not even though a lot of the times I talk about the food that I'm eating and I'm like, okay, I'm going to eat this because it has a ton of calories. It's really fucking calorically dense. Uh, it's, you know, that's not the whole point every time. Right? If you're trying to bulk up, you've got to eat food that you like to eat, you know? So if you've got a thing for a fucking, I don't even know, you know, like Meyer blueberry muffins and you can eat four... 450 calorie muffins at once in one fucking sitting, then hey man, that's an extra 1600 calories. Actually, 1800. That is a big fucking chunk. So I said go for it. But still, that doesn't mean you can only eat treats. And obviously, I talk a lot of treats. Like today, I had some fucking. I had like 300 grams of carbs worth of like fruit snacks and like. Uh, or no, 200 grams. Before I went to class, I stopped at the vending machine. I got like a. Like a sour gummy candy bag and then some fruit snacks so like 180 grams of carbs of sweets just straight up sugar uh, but you know don't be too fooled not everything is treats and I'm still getting my rice and some potatoes and steaks honestly I've really been trying to bias red meat as my protein source uh, that's one thing I noticed when I was dieting down uh, during the last cut I was doing a lot of steaks, a lot of um, like top rounds, kind of lean cuts, and I just felt fucking good. You know, I keep saying this, it's not like I'm going full on liver king carnivore, but I think the red meat dudes know what they're talking about. You know, so if that's you, I say, or if you haven't been getting too much red meat in your, uh, in your daily day, I say add some. And I'm not talking three pounds like a fucking nut. You know, eight ounces, half pound of ground beef. It'll go down like nothing. And honestly, I think you're going to legitimately feel better from it. So, I, uh, I need to stop and get gas. We'll just continue the car talk while I fucking sit in here. But tomorrow, the plan is going to be arms. So, the pressure's off in a way. You know, for me, with a leg day or a chest day... I do kind of put a lot of emphasis in the preparation. Like, if I don't get a good night's rest before a chest day, or before a, um, like a fucking leg day, I am gonna feel it. And that's not to say that I'm like, oh, tomorrow's an arm day, I'm gonna take the pressure off and just chill. But it is just kind of nice to have a lift like that where you're kind of targeting all smaller muscle groups, just because it's almost a break in a way. Like, a leg day? is taxing not only for just my quads and my hamstrings, but really for just my whole system. Like, I'm going to be tired afterwards. But an arm day, look, I'm not going to say it's like a full-on rest day, but it's definitely an easier day. So that is one thing I kind of like about it, my split now, because I used to do legs, chest, and back, and then arms and shoulders. So it was very dense. Like, every workout was... 
I think a little bit too much. Legs is already fucking hard. Chest and back, I really think that's too much. I, I'm not you, you do whatever you want, but after I do chest, the chest workout portion is really good. But once I move on to back, I'm already like, the back pump just isn't there. I think chest and back are just two muscles that are too big to be hit together, at least super hard. You know, if you're just doing kind of a, well, why would you ever want to do a maintenance workout? Right, we're trying to grow. But I think it's just too much. And then arms and shoulders on the same day. Sure, the sets aren't necessarily as intense because they're smaller muscle groups. But it's a ton of fucking volume. Because, you know, if I do arms and shoulders on the same day, dude, that's like fucking... We're getting up into like 20 working sets. At least. Maybe even a little more. So, that's sort of why now I really like the split that I've been on. To the point where I don't really foresee changing it anytime fucking soon. You know? So legs, chest, back, arms. It's, at least for me, a steady enough output of energy where I can do it consistently. Right? Look, I do believe you could probably work out too much, right? To the point where it's beyond recovery. But if you're only doing you know, a few muscle groups at a time, I think that's gonna be a bit more difficult. Like for me, if I were to go to the gym and do a full on leg workout and then try to do arms too, or I don't know, like do like a full fucking body workout. If I hit everything and I was in the gym for like five hours, yeah, I'm probably not gonna be recovered the next day because I just did too much damage. But that damage is only so bad because it's like, systemic. I think if you completely obliterate one or two muscle groups, sure, they're going to be sore the next day. You're going to feel it. But, you know, the day after I hit legs, even though my legs are still fucking on fire, like jumping out of bed in the morning, I can tell I'm fatigued and weak. My chest is still kind of fresh. So just because I'm trying to think of an analogy here. Really, all I'm trying to say is just because your legs are destroyed doesn't mean that your chest can't be worked. So for me, legs, chest, back, arms, repeat. That's just how I roll. That's a low enough, let's just call it fatigue lift for each day where I can come back the next day and still have a good lift on a maintainable basis. So if you finish your three-day split, like let's say you're doing a push-pull legs, and the day after legs, like you did a push workout, you did a pull workout, and then you did legs. If the day after your legs are still sore to the point where you really don't think it's going to be effective to actually work them, then take a rest day. Look, I don't say take no rest days. Right? If you're actually sore, it doesn't make any fucking sense to work out that muscle. It still needs recover. But if after that you know, three-day loop where you do push-pull legs, if... That day, which, you know, could be a push day, your chest feels good, your triceps feel good, your shoulders feel good, you know, I say hit it. Honestly, I think a lot of people take unnecessary rest days just because you know, people tell them to and you don't want to you know, try shit out for yourself. But then again, this is coming from the perspective of somebody who's like a total gym addict. So, of course, I'm probably going to say that I want to be in the gym all the time. <laughs> So, take that into perspective. Not just with me, but any kind of, like, workout videos or, I mean, really any fucking video in general. You know, you gotta remember, everybody sort of has underlying biases or, you know, real fucking biases when they're saying shit and posting it online. Oh my goodness. In terms of just being fucking, you know, kind of aware of what's going on. Right, don't listen to anything. <laughs> Too, uh, well, not too intently, but don't take everything as fucking fact, right? You gotta remember, a lot of, a lot of shit that gets said out in the world is orchestrated, right? Don't you think it's kind of weird that every news outlet, anytime there's like a major event, they all say the exact same headline? You know, like when you see a video of 50 different news channels, and they're all speaking in sync? Come on, man. 
open your eyes, right? Tune that shit out. Focus on your calories. Focus on your lift. Focus on what really fucking matters. So, but other than that, yeah, I'm fucking Jack. Just chilling, lifting. Well, actually, that's not true. Classes are also going well. I'm sure... Well, I'm sure if you're watching this, you're a responsible student, if that's your demographic, and you're getting straight A's in every fucking class, and you're doing all your homework and every bit of extra credit, and you're studying for hours upon hours. Very responsible. But don't let that get in the way of your fucking lifts, all right? And I'm serious. But, you know, you got to balance this shit out. So that's... um. I do think about this a lot. Well, not a lot, maybe, but sometimes I think about it. And I feel rather fucking spoiled. Because in any personal endeavor, like if you have any kind of shit that you like doing, then it's going to be in your best interest to have a pretty significant amount of time, ideally probably per day, to dedicate to it, so that you can constantly be you know, working towards whatever you're working towards. Now, that doesn't have to be lifting, that could be whatever the fuck you want to do. Of course, if I'm talking about anything, it's going to be about, you know, lifting weights. But I'm not, like, I guess by nature, a fucking social butterfly, per se. You know, it's not like I, I don't you know, hang out with the, with the fucking fools every so often. But I don't have too much of a problem kind of, you know, just chilling. Or reading the group chat, but not replying. And kind of only... Popping up every once in a blue moon. So if you're a real fucking outgoing dude, you're always kind of okay. We gotta we gotta all hang out here. We gotta all go out here. All right, come on, let's go bar hopping tonight. Okay, whose house are we pre gaming at? Uh, you know, kind of mixing in the fact that as you get older, hanging out with your buddies usually correlates with uh, drinking. Uh, that's not in your best interest. I'm serious. I know it's kind of, it's not like everybody that says this follows it, but fucking, look. In terms of getting a badass leg pump or a crazy fucking chest day, right? if you've got that tomorrow and that's something that you really value and you actually want to kind of excel at it, is it, I mean, the temporary benefit of enjoyment that night in the long run, I don't think that's going to outweigh the long-term satisfaction you'll get from kind of having good lifts on a consistent basis. No, it doesn't have to be lifts. It could be anything. But, you know, that's one thing that separates fucking man from animal, right? We've got the capability to employ delayed gratification. So... For the most part, of course, there's outliers, dudes who just were, like, massively lucky with whatever they did. They're just a baller by nature. They're just sick for them, I guess. But if you're not capable of kind of, you know, putting in work without any results for a long period of time, then you're not really going to... Well, then you shouldn't be surprised when you don't get any results. That's what I'm trying to, That's what I'm kind of trying to say. And... Again, I think I am kind of spoiled. Like, with all these videos, the first one that I posted is the exact same format as this one. So, I definitely kind of lucked out, hit the, I guess, hit the algorithm right on the head like that. But you gotta remember, before I recorded anything, even like some TikToks, there was fucking like three and a half years of solo lifts, right? Where it was just me doing my thing. So, it's, uh, don't forget that anybody who's anybody, not that that's the point, it's not like a mom, yeah, whatever, but anybody who's really fucking awesome at something, I think they're just capable of practice, practicing it and actually kind of improving at it without anybody watching them. So I'm kind of jumbling all sorts of ideas into this little chat, but I guess what I'm really trying to say is don't be upset by the fact that this shit is going to take a while. You know what I'm saying? Don't be discouraged by the fact that, you know, before you get to whatever your dream physique is, uh, I don't know if I really have a dream physique. I just kind of want to 
keep growing as much as I can. But you know, before you can get to a point of absolute fucking, you know, freakiness, it's going to take a long period of just doing the exact same fucking thing over and over and over again. You know? But you got to remember that that grind, that repetitive nature of your day in day out routine, it will fucking add up. That is, if you can stick to it, and if you can rewire your brain to enjoy doing it, then that's even better. You know, like as often as I talk about like motivation and like, oh, you gotta, you know, just stay disciplined. You know, I, I, I'm not even, in a way, I'm almost kind of just talking out my ass, right? There are some days where I do feel like extra tired. Like let's say I had a full day of like exams and like I had to work on projects. So let's say I've been awake from like six to, I mean, let's include like procrastinated assignments too. So I've been up from like six studying exams, projects, whatever. And then I don't really get to go lift until like 10 at night. Like on a day like that, where I'm really just fucking totally out of it. That's a day where I might have to tap into some discipline and say, okay, dude, fuck, I'm tired. All right, whatever, come on, let's go. But for the most part, I just like fucking lifting, you know. So it's it's never really, it's never something that I have to dread. I'm always looking forward to it. So if you can somehow rewire your brain like that, where you actually enjoy it, or make sure you do a routine that you enjoy, then you're gonna have no issue doing this shit for years upon years on end. Right. This is another thing I was trying to think of. Not only is it just you know fun to have something to work at on a consistent basis. Right? You know, fucking hobbies, whatever. Not just kind of whatever you got to do for work or school or anything. Just having something that you do purely for your own enjoyment, that's going to give you a pretty serious amount of satisfaction. But then, taking that a step further, right? Practicing it and learning it and kind of, uh, I mean, even obsessing over something like that to the point where you become skilled. Dude, you got to remember, and it's at its fucking core of human nature, right? Proficiency and fucking you know, high level ability is just fucking badass. You know? That's why we all love fucking athletes and rock stars and whoever else. Maybe not rock stars per se, but like you know, fucking Buckethead when he's going fucking crazy on a guitar like you've never seen. The fact that you can see somebody do something where compared to the average person, you're like, holy fuck, how the hell does he do that shit? Right? That's fucking cool. That's why we think sharks are cool. They're the fucking apex predator, right? There is nothing better. Right? In the simple facet of just being a beast in the water, they've got it down. So, in a way, I think the same thing about just anything. And I'm not saying me, I mean just like people in general, right? Fast cars, sick. Jets, sick. A big ass fucking monster truck, sick. You know, the shit that you thought was cool when you were a kid Deep down in your brain, that shit is still cool, right? WWE wrestlers just being fucking, right? That shit is sweet. But you got to remember, there was a long buildup before you got to that process. I'm not saying weightlifting is like evolution, like in the fucking shark reference, but, you know. Why do we fucking love Goku or Naruto or any badass character like that, right? They're like, oh, they're constantly getting stronger. They're doing new shit. Do you think anybody would watch Naruto if for every one episode of cool shit that they did in the show, there was like 300 episodes where it was just training and it was just him like throwing a fucking ninja star a thousand times and just, you know, repeating that shit constantly? You know, that's the boring part. But you kind of have to go through that to get to the cool part. You know what I'm saying? Not that I think training is boring, but... I hope you kind of understand a little bit of what I'm getting at here, right? So, I th let's just keep this rain going. This might turn into a long one. But I think a lot of people nowadays, uh, I mean, not only am I fucking kind of concerned that we're pretty much on the first few big steps into technological dystopia, fucking, you know, the Apple, is it? I forget the name of it. You, these dudes walking around with a VR headset. Dude, that is fucking freaking me out. But, just thinking on a more day-to-day -day level, how many people do you know have something that they're putting a serious amount of effort into, which they also enjoy, 
which they're also improving at on a fucking seriously consistent basis. I don't mean like, you know, a few month uh, you know, ADHD hyperfixation phase where, you know, fucking, I don't know, what are people hyperfixating on nowadays? Whatever. I'm not talking just a few months stint. I'm talking something that this guy's going to keep doing for years on end and he's on track to fucking be really good at it. How many people do you know like that? I think it's getting rarer and rarer. Everybody's too focused on looks maxing, edging and gooning. Come on, dude. Fucking pick up some weights and curl that shit. Don't stay away from this brain rot fucking bullshit. You know? So if you don't have a thing, then I think you're missing out on a pretty serious aspect of life. I'm not saying that there's no pride in you know, just living stably, but you got to have something more. You know, you're not meant to just wake up, go to work, come home and like chill and watch TV because you're bored from work, and then go to sleep and repeat the process. You got to have more than that. I mean, I don't know about you, but I definitely need more than that. It just doesn't. That's just not something I want to do. If you don't have anything, then what does that mean? That means you gotta find something. Right? Just look around. What do you what's something that you see, you know, people doing where you're like, oh that's pretty cool. Oh, that could be fun. It could be anything. It doesn't it, and I'm not talking about just the gym, I just mean anything. Right? I feel like um I've said this before, I love I love this reference though. I feel like uh fuck, what's his name? Italian guy, always on Joe Rogan. I feel like Joey Diaz right now. Right? There's a there's a clip of him where he's like, you know anybody where they don't do nothing? They don't do nothing! That's, right, that's who I'm talking about, you know? So if you don't have something, fuck, man. just pick anything. Pick anything that interests you. Give it like, I mean, as a beginner, just watch some YouTube videos on it, right? If your shit is, you're like, dude, I think fucking, uh, I'm trying to think of, uh, trying to think of, uh, dude, I think guitars are cool. I love Metallica. I'd love to be able to do that. Just watch some fucking Rob Scallon videos, right? Maybe get a scrappy guitar trying to learn that shit or, you know, just anything. And hey, let's say you try that for like two months and you're like, eh, fuck it, whatever. I'm done with this. Then pick something else. Don't think of that as a failure of a endeavor. Just think of that as one thing crossed off your list, right? And then you get to pick something else. I think there's a certain amount of magic where you can find something which fits a couple of different criteria where you enjoy doing it and you're good at it. Right? When a small and I'm not even talking talent. I just mean like an ability to just do something repetitively and not get bored of it. Right? Even that is I'd say fucking talent. But even just a small amount of natural skill to do something combined with enjoying doing it, that is what's going to fucking set you up for some serious upward spiral action. Like, if you actually want it, if you have an internal motivation to do something, it's going to be so much more fucking fun. You know, I, um, back in high school, or even before then, I was doing, um, I, was, I used to do gymnastics. Not at like an insanely high level, but I could do some pretty, like, you know, the spring floor? Like, I could do like some double fucking backflips and land back on my feet. So I could do some cool shit for sure. And then the same thing with diving, right? With the diving board, you do a couple flips, you dive in, try not to splash, right? And I liked it, you know, but it wasn't really my thing at the end of the day. Though I saw, I did enjoy it enough where, you know, I wanted to do it. But I saw a lot of kids there where, they had a lot of pressure on them because a lot of the time their parents were really their parents were really putting a lot of fucking stress on them to perform well and sure they could be good but it just they didn't really have an enjoyment it seemed like so if you can find something where you're internally motivated to do it and you enjoy it then i think you're setting yourself up for success 
and the benefits that you'll get from having something like that, like something that you can do for one hour a day, which you really fucking like. Dude, I swear, you're just going to enjoy life more. I'm not a fucking psychiatrist, but I'd say anybody would agree with that statement. So, just uh, just a few things to keep in mind. If you've been living the same day on repeat, and not in a good way, like I've been living the same year on repeat. Wake up, food, gym, bed. Right. So, even though the days may be the same, the results are gradually differing over time. Right? So that's where living the same day on repeat, I don't see it as a problem. But... If you're living on the same day and repeat, and you're not moving towards anything, then you're just eating away time. And you gotta remember, dude, we've only got so much of that shit. It is running out. So, take a few of those thoughts to heart. It's definitely worth thinking about. Uh, But, I'm a fucking nut. I can't not go. At least not if I, you know, have the option. So, a good cheeky little shoulder day. Throw around a good amount of weight. Kind of, um, kind of an ego liftery few sets. But, I don't know, man. I mean, it kind of, any kind of set, you can sort of argue the benefits of whatever style you're doing for it. You know, and what I'm saying there is like, If I were to have just done, you know, eight sets for side delts and rear delts, each of them being like a light, you know, squeezing set, 30 pound dumbbells, you know, burn out like that. You know, I I would say, ah, well, you know, shoulders is a small muscle group, so I don't need to hit it with that much weight. So, you know, I don't need to really throw around eight reps. I can do sets of 20, you know, really get a good burn and that'll be a good stimulus. But then, you know, I throw the 60s around and even though that is heavy, like that's definitely the heavier end for me, I wasn't really swinging that much at all, you know. I think the upper limit of what you should be doing for lateral raises is going to be you know, a bit under the weight where you'd have to really swing to move it around. Because I think that does defeat the purpose and you are going too heavy. But as long as you can actually do the reps... I think you're all right, man. I don't think you have any need for concern. But with a heavy set like that, you know, then I could say, well, you know, I get a lot of tension on my side delts. You know, I'm really doing some damage. I'm really burning out. Getting a couple partials at the end. Right? Very quick, intense set. Lower-ish reps. You know, around 8 to 10. And that's a good set, too. So it's... You know, you can kind of... And I'm not saying me, but I mean just anybody in general. Fitness... You know, guru, bodybuilders talking about their workouts. A lot of this shit can be, you know, meandered into making sets. But, you know, I think if you kind of cut it down to the basics, then if you do hard sets, maybe you do some heavier, maybe you do some lighter squeezing, I think you're good. You know, I doubt there's, I don't think that doing only one style of set of any variety is going to be like the best method, right? I mean, dudes are gonna get big doing lighter squeezing weights, right? I mean, we know fucking uh, people talking about Phil Heath where he's doing dumbbell curls with like 30s and he's doing like perfect form, everything. I mean, we see Nick Walker doing, you know, pretty controlled volume sets of uh, like Bulgarian split squats, you know, every rep nice and clean, pretty light. I mean, light for him, of course, it's fucking a ton of weight, really squeezing, right? And then we see, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of a character who's really moving some shit around. We see Larry Wheels. Fucking freak. Also super strong. Throwing around a lot of weight. So, I don't think you should really take any of those, you know, examples as like, okay, this is how to do it, and this is wrong. Right? I think you should just take it as, you know, a lot of different stuff works. So you should try a lot of different stuff and then see, you know, what works for you. If you're making zero progress, you got to change something about your training, diet, sleep, routine. But if you are making progress, I mean, fuck it, man. Don't fix it if it ain't broke, you know? Now, 
that's actually not really my mentality. Even though I do make, you know, pretty good progress over time, I'm always trying to optimize and like think of new ways to do shit. And like, okay, I should probably, I mean, I keep talking about how I'm trying to change my leg training, how I'm trying to, you know, switch up the way I go by triceps. That's, you should always be trying to improve, but as long as you're making progress, then you can be kind of, you know, content with the fact that what you're doing is working. So you're in a better state than dudes who are fucking, you know, day in, day out doing a routine that they think is, you know, difficult and they're actually pushing themselves. But at the end of the day, whether they're not eating enough food or they're not recovering enough by, you know, having really shit sleep, or maybe their training is uh, on the fucking lower end of intense and all they're doing is just maintaining the build that they have, right? That is not an awesome state to be in. You know, there's a, uh, and it kind of sucks because I think it's such a fine line. Like it's not a massive difference to go from, you know, looking the same every, like months after months after months to, you know, just increasing your effort just a bit, you know, getting a couple extra calories in per day, maybe, you know, pushing a little bit harder on your progressive overload, uh, doing some drop sets, just, you know, getting better sleep, right? Just a small difference can push you over the edge from just maintaining the build that you have to progressing right, and getting a better one. Maybe not, you know, better, but you know, maybe bigger, more muscle, leaner, less body fat, and, you know, whatever your goal is, right? So that's, uh, that's on you, man. That is on you. You know, you got to remember, nobody gets anything out of, you know, telling you the perfect way to do this shit. Um, well, I guess that's, I guess if you're a bodybuilding coach, then you do get something out of it. You get, you get paid, but you know, for the most part, nobody gives a shit whether you're making progress or not. So it's kind of up to you. It's in your hands, man. You got to remember, you are the one controlling your life, regardless of what you may think about how like other people are fucking with you or whatever. You're the captain of your own ship. So as much as people love blaming circumstances or like, oh, well, if it wasn't for this, then that is a fucking awful mentality to have. That is a loser mentality to have, right? Any statement in sort of a regretful manner, which follows the lines of, well, if it wasn't for this, then blank. Or if this didn't happen, then but Look, right? Shit's gonna go down. Everybody, been you know fucked up in some way or another but the difference between you know somebody who's a baller or somebody who's just kind of a chump is you know the baller can look back at that sort of thing and in a way almost be grateful for it you know because if you're actually killing it then you get to look back at your life and if any detail that happened was off or was missing you could be in a completely different fucking scenario, man. You could be like, well, I, I can't even tell you. You could be not killing it. I guess that's what I'm trying to say there. So if you're on top of your shit, you know, you're doing whatever, you're making tangible moves, then you can kind of look back and say like, oh, well, if it wasn't for this, then, you know, you can sort of say that in, I guess I got to kind of retract my statement. You can say, well, if it wasn't for this, then I wouldn't be where I am now. But there's a difference between like, oh shit, if I didn't get, oh, if they didn't kick me off the team, then I never would have met this person or I never would have started doing this, right? That's cool. But if your mentality is, oh, well, if they didn't do that, then, you know, they don't even know where I would be. I'd, oh, come on. Right? To blame past experiences and circumstances on, you know, why you're not, you know, doing what you want to be doing now L mentality, right? You gotta sort of circumvent that shit one way or another. So I think that's the end of my little uh, my little rant, my little chit chat. So plan for tomorrow. Legs. Uh, I'm not sure what gym I'll go to. The college rec center has two leg extensions, and one of them is broken. So I mean, you're kind of screwed if you're doing legs, because there can be like five people working in on that one leg extension.
you know, not awesome. So maybe I'll go somewhere else. Uh, I mean, you got to remember, I got a couple of gyms at my disposal, not just for, you know, well, yeah, I guess kind of just for fun. Right? Some gyms have different equipment, which some days I might want. Like, uh, I'm trying to think of an example. Planet Fitness, open 24 hour, whereas the College Rec Center closes at like, you know, 10 some nights. So let's say I got to do a light lift, go over there. You know, stuff like that. So if you can swing it, having a couple different memberships is kind of fun. Plus, you get to see all, like, a completely different crew. Who doesn't love to socialize? But yeah, I don't know where I'll go. Uh, but no matter where, the lift will consist of a few key attributes. Obviously, a good-ass hamstring pump, just from, you know, leg curls, maybe some RDLs. And then quads is going to be made up of leg extensions some kind of pressing i'm not exactly sure what kind um, i think my back is still a little bit tender not to like the point of serious injury but like minor tweak which i definitely don't want to you know exacerbate by actually fucking you know rip it into again so if i do some squats and i can tell i'm still feeling a little something something i'll just back off maybe do some kind of leg press or something but leg extensions definitely some sissy squats toward the end and then Whatever that meat in the middle of quads ends up being, I know for a fact it's all going to add up to a nice and freaky leg pump. I, uh, I'm still waiting for the day where I don't fit into all my really baggy pants just from having my legs, you know, fully pumped up. So every lift, one step closer, you know, one you know, tenth of an inch closer to that ultimate goal. Well, the goal of bigger legs, at least. Big Boss just sent me on a mission to thrash legs. You know, I'll tell you something. I keep seeing all these Metal Gear Solid TikToks. Looks pretty fucking badass. But I feel like I'm missing out on some pretty crazy, like, storylines. Because I'm not really a big, like, video game player. Right? Like, I'll run through some Warzone, not so much recently. But long form kind of story games like that I just can't I don't know I just don't like playing them but the story is fucking badass you know I really wish I could uh I want to see like a movie version that would be fucking cool but enough of this fucking you know liquid snake references let's actually talk about what the leg day is going to look like so hamstrings um bah, hard to say Hard to say exactly. Uh, I can guarantee one thing. That seated leg curls are going to play a role. Because this gym really only has seated leg curls. They've also got some, uh, well, I'll just have to see what I want to do. I haven't done any RDL work for a little while. Any, you know, hip hinging, hamstring work. Which I do need to throw in. Just for the sake of training stimulus variability aka just you know hitting everything in every way that i can uh, i do kind of have a little bit of a bias towards hamstring curls i just like the way they feel i like you know throwing around a lot of weight or you know doing some weight i can handle and just really squeezing and burning rdls just haven't really done it for me so much on a uh you know preference basis but I'm not just going to neglect them because I don't love them as much as hamstring curls. That would be like if somebody said they don't like doing pressing for chest and they love doing flies. I mean, that may be true, but I think you're missing out on some stimulus. So hamstrings will be probably hamstring curls first, pre-exhaust them, so that when I move on to you know some kind of RDL, I don't need so much weight. And then... Maybe do like hamstring curls, RDLs, hamstring curls again. We'll see. Either way, after around maybe five-ish sets for hamstrings, um, I'm trying to lower my hamstring volume just a touch to save a little bit of energy for quads. So in a way, this is a little bit of a quad-biased lift. But, uh, yeah, and then quads, leg extensions. I'm not sure if I'm going to do any really heavy pressing. We'll just have to see what happens. I do know that I want to do some 
Eh, well, it kind of sucks because the gym is packed. Uh, I guess I'm not in there, but just by guessing. But I really love doing this sort of single leg superset. So, single leg leg extensions, and then jump onto a, uh, a leg press, and then do single leg reps, or, you know, maybe 20 reps in the leg extension, and then 10, or as many as necessary. Uh, on the leg press but that's sort of uh, you know that's not really something you can do if the gym is too busy you don't want to be a total chump just fucking you know hogging machines I haven't seen it that much but I mean let's say you're waiting for a fucking cable stack uh, you know you see one you go up and ask if anybody's been using it somebody's like yeah he's coming back and you sit there and you watch it just left open for like three minutes. And then the second you go up and say, fuck it, I'm just going to use it. The guy fucking shows up out of nowhere like a ghost. You know, hate to see it, right? In a busy gym, I do think a little bit of equipment usage etiquette is required. You know, you've really only got access to what you've got your hands on. So... I don't have anything else to say there. Even though this might not be the most intense quad day, because I'm not going to do like seriously heavy... Well, actually that's not true. I think I need to almost rewire my fucking perception of what intense means. Uh, because for me, sort of at my core, when I think of an intense workout, what sort of comes to mind is a heavy workout. Which I think is probably a minor flaw in my approach to training. Because I can have a really intense day of arms and, you know, don't curl anything heavier than a 50 or like, you know, a 40 and just make the sets intense by way of effort, not the weight itself. I think, yeah, I need to kind of try to work on that. Because even though I may not squat, you know, 500 for 9 or 8 or whatever, it's still going to be an intense lift because of the leg extensions, some supersets, some everything. So... Yeah. Oh, I didn't get a massive amount of sleep late last night, so not really an awesome move on my end in terms of my preparation. But I did take a nap in between classes. Not that I think that counts. Obviously, that wasn't like awesome, you know, REM sleep cycling. But I'm not too concerned. So I woke up kind of light today. Only 250. Not ideal. You gotta know, remember, I was like 253 a few days ago. But that, you know, three pounds of water and carbs didn't just fall off of nowhere. I had like two days where I felt kind of sickly. Not like really sick, but my stomach was kind of feeling weird. I wasn't eating as much food as I should have. Which, you know, key point, should have. So I gotta make sure to freaking get my calories in. Because you gotta remember, if your weight is plateaued on a bulk, Look, your training may be off and you may need to, you know, improve your split or whatever. Or maybe you need more rest days or maybe you need less rest days or, you know, maybe your sleep is trash. But I think the main factor that's keeping you from gaining size, you're just not eating enough food. You know? So calories in, calories out. If you're not eating enough calories, if you're not getting enough calories in, you're not going to have the, you're physically just not going to have the energy in your body to, you know, deposit mass to deposit contractile tissue aka lean ass fucking muscle even if it you know has to be deposited underneath a little bit of fat layer right? anybody who can you know appreciate being cut should also inversely be able to handle adding a little bit of body fat on a bulk because the two are flip sides of a coin right? gain mass Get a little bit softer, trim down, and show off the real mass that you gained underneath. That's always been my... Well, not always, but that has been my approach as of late. But I was main gaining for a while in high school to freshman year of college. Because I was doing sports, I was doing diving at the time, so... It wasn't necessarily beneficial for me to try to bulk up as heavy as I possibly could. Because... Uh, lose a little bit of athleticism not that it's gone 
Don't worry, I need to... I'm sure I'll go to the pool eventually and try to do another flip off the diving board. Probably not tonight, though. Probably not tonight. Well, definitely not tonight. They're fucking closed. But once you learn that shit, you don't forget it. I just need to make sure to stretch out so I don't pull any... pull my hamstrings off or anything weird like that. But, yeah. So legs... Legs... Hamstrings... or er, quads especially. I think maybe doing kind of a back and forth style, and it's hard to say. You know who I really want to talk about leg training from? Somebody, or maybe a perspective on quad training, which I think would be pretty interesting, is speed cyclists. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen the guy. Uh, look up Quadzilla. I'm sure that'll be him. Dude's legs are fucking beyond massive. So I'm sure, obviously, he's got... A genetic predisposition for some badass legs. You don't get like, I mean, his legs are like 34 inches around. This dude's legs around are literally bigger than my fucking waist, at least. Uh, but so, definitely a genetic role that's going to take in, take part there. But I would love to get a one-on-one -on -one chat and hear their tips for quad growth, because. You don't get any muscle to a really crazy and impressive level, at least not just out of nowhere with no reasoning or you know, skill. So there's definitely a method to whatever madness that guy's doing, and I think I want a piece of it. Uh, but other than that, I'm still going to make sure every leg day I get a good amount of, hopefully, stimulating fatigue from doing all my hard sets and a gnarly pump at the end. I know I'm going to feel my legs tomorrow. Not that that's the point. Is, you know, just being sore, that's not like the actual point of at least bodybuilding training. And if you're sore, that doesn't mean that you had a good workout. And if you're not sore, that doesn't mean you had a bad workout. I'm talking about, you know, the day after. But everybody knows after a good leg day, you're probably going to fucking feel it. So plan for tomorrow is chest. I don't need to get into that in too much detail since obviously I'm just going to talk about it tomorrow. But you got to love a chest day. Honestly, I mean, I love them all. Uh, this is one thing which I think is a little bit small-minded of people. Maybe not. Maybe that's not the right word. I'm really just saying, for me, I don't really have like a specific muscle group that I, you know, favor in a sense, right? I don't have one muscle group where I'm like, okay, I love chest day. Oh man, I fucking hate back day. Oh dude, I love arm day. Oh, legs. Eh, I'm skipping it. Eh, fuck that. You know, I do not agree with that mentality in any freaking way at all, right? So I think any true any true potential muscle monoliths, any beefcakes, they've got an understanding that you know, every body part deserves an equal amount of attention and, I mean, let's say, let's go so far as to even say an equal amount of affection, you know, an equal amount of just baseline enjoyment. Right? So, in a way, that may be up to you to kind of, you know, look at each lift and really focus on just the benefits and kind of hype those up, right? Like, leg day. Leg day is kind of the day where I get the most proud of myself just based on the exertion of the sets. You know, Like, I can go hard on chest. I can go hard on arms. And, you know, I do like that I've done hard sets. But there is something to that full body kind of fatigue that you get from a leg day. Right? Where when it's actually done and you did a good one, you can get in the car and you can leave without any regrets. But then... A chest pump is fucking gnarly. Having your arms pumped up to the point where they're an extra half inch or even maybe three quarter inches bigger than normal, that's just fucking crazy to see. Having a big ass back pump with a lat spread that, lat spread, a lat spread that, you know, is borderline spanning your elbows. And then getting a shoulder pump where your shoulders look like you've got a football shoulder pad on. I mean, all this shit is just fucking sweet, you know? So. If you were curious what my favorite lift was, 
They're like my kids, man. I love them all equally. And unlike your parents, I'm not lying when I say that. I don't. I didn't mean for that to be a dig on you. If you think you're not the favorite kid, I was just trying to say a little goof. But what else is there to say? You know what? I'm gonna. I'm gonna ask you for a fucking favor. What are some good shows to watch? Right? And no holds barred, man. I'll. You, know, you tell me a show. I'll look up the. Rev I'll look up some reviews on. I'll see if it's cool. Uh, but I'm fucking. Man, I don't know. I keep seeing so many One Piece leaks that, like, I don't even really see the need to catch up yet, because I'm already sort of... I'm at, like, 1020. That's where I watched up to. And I kind of already get the gist of what's going on. Um, Sopranos watched. Breaking Bad watched. Uh, Better Call Saul. <laughs> oh, goodness. Better Call Saul watched. Game of... Oh, man, I'm just fucking burping my ass off. Game of Thrones not watched. But I'm saving it. I'm saving it for later. Uh, so, you know, just just keep me in the loop, man. If you got something that you think is cool, tell me that shit. I, well, you know what? I'm not caught up on Epo yet, the boxing show. Maybe I'll get back into that. That's pretty badass. I definitely think there's something to watching media that, you know, Kind of has some characters that are actually doing cool shit. Uh, classic jab. I always make fun of Young Sheldon. Look, man, Young Sheldon's kind of funny. The show itself, I do not mind, but you know, in a lifting context, that's kind of where I take a, a hit at it. You're not gonna get hyped up for a fucking badass lift watching some Young Sheldon, right? You know, it's really gonna get you seeing Goku go fucking Ultra Instinct or. I don't know, fucking anything. Anything like that. It's just kind of, at least as a dude, it's going to hit you right in your deepest part of your brain. Like, oh yeah, fighting. Sweet. Right? Some shit like that. That's, uh, that's just sort of my take on it. So, as many rom-coms and just chill shows as you watch, for every one episode of The Office, you need at least, I would say at least one and a half episodes of Baki. Right? Just to balance yourself out so you don't get too, um, you know, too complacent. So, that's not a cut and dry rule, but it does sound pretty cool to me. Yeah. Locked, well, not locked down in a sense, but I can't really, I'm not going to be able to walk around free, which is fucking pretty cool that <laughs> that's the case. I mean, that's still kind of, I can almost not even believe it in a way, but glad I got to go as a regular lifter before all this craziness happened. But that's going to be fun. So if you're curious, which day should I get my ticket to the Arnold if I want to see my main man Sam? Don't even sweat it. Because I'm going to be there the whole time. The whole freaking time. So I'm sure eh, I don't know where the lifts are going to be. Because you got to remember, that's sort of a whole day like... I forget the timeline. Maybe noon. No, even before noon, it's like 11 to something. So those are going to be some night lifts. The only concern I have is I got to make sure I bring some food. Right? Because no matter what is going on, fucking school, you know, hanging out at the booths, anything, I'm not going to let it stop me from getting my calories in. You can guarantee it. Maybe I'm going to buy a... Uh, maybe I'll get like a really big fancy cooler and have like you know, 10 meal prepped little things with me at all times. But, either way, that's going to be fucking sick. Keep an eye out, for sure. So, that kind of thing is just fucking cool, too. Just, uh, because obviously we're all kind of, not desensitized in a way, but from social media, we do get to see the top 1% of every fucking field just clustered into one place, and you got a constant feed of it, right? But when you look to your left... And you see Jay Cutler, and then you look to your right, and you see Larry Wheels, and every other freak under the sun, all in one building. I mean, that's pretty fucking cool. So, that'll be that'll be fun to actually see every other social media lifter character in person. Because I've only ran in, I've only ever ran into a few. Well, actually, actually like none. Yeah, that's 
Now I'm, now I'm getting extra excited. Yeah, that's going to be cool. It's going to be cool. So I'm sure I'll try to get a little bit of a... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't really do any kind of vlogs. But I'll, I'll try to get some videos there. Just some little updates on what's going on. So let's transition back into an actual talk. What are you doing right now? What are you doing, Dylan? Yeah, yeah, I gotcha. Are you bulking up or are you cutting down? Because if you've just been in a little bit of a state of limbo, and this is everybody, uh, you know, are you really progressing? For the most part, I think a lot of lifters reach a certain level where you know, they've learned how to train, they get the gist of it, they're getting good pumps every time they go to the gym, but if you look at them right now versus them in one year, gains-wise, pretty much the same dude. Right? You know, not much change. So in that sense, I think, sure, you may have been doing hard lifts, but all you've really been doing is maintaining the build that you have. So apart from the beginner, which I do think... I do think main gaining is a perfectly valid approach, right? Just you know, get your gram per pound of body weight of protein in and then lift hard. I think that's going to give you some good solid results as long as you do lift hard for real. Uh, but after a couple years of that, if you kind of start to stagnate, then I really think you've got to push the food and actually, you know, try to do a little bit of a legit bulk. I'm not talking like perma bulk to 30% body fat, but you know, enough where you're actually changing the scale. Because uh, you, know, you got to remember, your body gets used to this shit. Right? If I do a period of time on this bulk where I only ate, you know, like if I just set my calorie limit to 4,000 calories from the beginning of this bulk onward, uh, you know, I'd gain some weight, but eventually I'd be stagnated. I'd be at a size where I'm just not gaining any more weight and I'm going to have to, you know, increase the calories. So you do get a little bit used to what you're doing to the point where if you want to make any continuous progress you've got to you know up the ante in a way add an extra 100 grams of carbs add some extra fats you know, maybe uh if you're locked in and you can't really eat too much too much more food throw in a dextrose shake post workout i'm not at that level yet but don't worry that is going to return and soon enough what i'm really trying to say there is if you really feel like you've been in the same place as a lifter for even just a couple of months, and you can't decide, oh, well, I don't want to bulk up because I don't want to lose my abs, or hey, I don't want to cut down because I don't, I don't want to lose my strength. Uh, you know, I think those short-term, I wouldn't even say they're consequences. I'd say they're just like, uh, what's the word I'm thinking? Not phenomena. They're just aspects, right? The short-term aspects of a bulk or a diet. If you can't get over that, if you can't get over the hump of dealing with that, then uh, you got to change something up because if you can't deal with that short-term dissatisfaction, then I don't think you're going to have too much fun or too many, too much success actually going for long-term gains. You know, I've got no problem losing my fucking freaky chest striations and, you know, ab veins when I start bulking up because I know that, you know, that's sort of the price I got to pay to actually put some more mass on my build. And the end overarching goal, at least for me, which I've got pretty much burned into my fucking brain, is increase body mass. Increase body mass over time. I'm definitely trying to be a bit more, maybe not methodical, but, well, yeah, I'd say methodical is kind of the right word. I'm really trying to get my reps a bit more, maybe not productive per se, but more chest biased because uh, I can definitely tell my front delts are really overpowering and taking over in a lot of my heavier pressing movements uh, which I have been trying to fix but it's tricky for me man I think I probably need to stretch because I'm sure like even just sitting here like my shoulders aren't just naturally like far back in a good in good posture you know I'm nice and fucking hunched well not nice and hunched but you know I'm hunched which, in terms of pressing and chest isolation, it's not awesome for me. So, um, on that set of machine presses, where I was um, the, the black machine, not the plate-loaded one, 
that one felt pretty good because I was really trying to like, like pull my scapulas together, if you know what I'm talking about. Like pull my shoulders back and get all chest. But kind of subconsciously, maybe this is just the way I learned to lift. But like I kind of have a natural tendency to move my shoulders back and forth too, which is something I am trying to work on. But today's chest day, pretty chest isolated. And I can kind of say that for sure because I know that some days when I do a lot of hammer strength press incline or even sometimes incline smith uh, and then some cable flies too, I can feel that my front delts have gotten a serious amount of work like where they're, they're burning straight up as though I did a bunch of like shoulder press. So that's, uh, that's one thing I'm trying to work on there in terms of my chest training. So the more chest days where I can only feel my chest you know, being fully pumped up compared to like, you know, my front delts too, the better. Right? And that's why even on the days that I do do shoulders, and they're already kind of ahead of the game compared to my arms, I'm not going to do any extra front delt work because my front delts get enough activation from all the incline and regular pressing that I do because I naturally have a tendency to work them. But even if you don't, 90% of lifters, their front delts, are gonna be more developed than their rear and side. So, you know, just the nature of the beast when it comes to shoulders. Like, you gotta remember, even on movements where you're not really hitting your front delts, they're gonna come into play, right? Even unintentionally. You're doing a set of dumbbell curls, right? Think about this. When the dumbbell's at your side, completely like vertical, you know, your shoulders aren't doing anything. They might be working a little bit with your traps just to you know hold on to the weight but they're not doing much but once you do that curl and the weight moves in front of your body right technically if you're kind of looking at the mechanics and forces of the system or whatever else your front delts are keeping your forearm or your upper arm in the same spot because if they didn't come into play at all then your dumbbell would be right next to your side like you were doing drag curls uh, I don't know if you can really visualize what I'm saying but main idea your front delts get worked a lot so you're probably better off you know, spamming your side and rear delts that's um that's one thing that I started doing early on like I haven't done shoulder pressing uh, at least not on a consistent basis I do do a couple of sets just every so often kind of just for the fuck of it like every few months I'll do a few sets of like machine shoulder press but consistently and heavy I haven't done any shoulder pressing for at least probably three years, maybe, yeah, yeah, probably about three years or so. Uh, and again, it's just because, you know, for me, I've got a bit of a tendency to overwork my front delts. So just a little bit of insight there into my approach with uh, my front delt slash chest training. But chest feels pretty good. Uh, I'm definitely not like at a hundred percent compared to before I pulled it like a month ago, but it's pretty good. So I don't foresee it being an issue as these, you know, pretty hard and heavy sets progress, but it is something to watch out for in the few months after tweaking something or pulling something. If you pulled it pretty good, I'm not talking like hospital level, like that's its own thing. But if you like pulled your chest and you know it, and you had to stop that chest day, you wait a few weeks and it starts to come back, you know, you start getting into your normal workouts. Definitely keep an eye on that because retweaking an injury, I'd say is much more likely than having a new one. So even though you could feel pretty good, uh, let's say maybe one day I don't get an awesome amount of sleep and I don't get awesome hydration, you know, I'm kind of dehydrated, maybe I'm a little bit underfed and I go into a heavy chest day and, you know, I'm just a little more stiff and I jump into heavy weight, which, you know, I might feel comfortable with, but that little part of me could still be compromised to the point where it could get hurt again. So that's, that's part of the reason why with chest, I do a pretty, maybe not intricate, but kind of a lengthy warm up. I don't always show it just because it's kind of, I mean, it's sort of repetitive, but before I even did that first, you know, set of incline bench with one plate to warm up there. I was hanging around the cables for like five minutes or like six minutes or so doing some tricep activation with some single arm pushdowns, some rear delts kind of rotator cuff work like this. Like if the cable's in front of me, 
doing shit like this, getting my rotator cuff going, a little bit of rear delts, and then some cable flies just to get some chest activation. So I've said this before, but I'll just I'll just run through the rant again. Chest is the day which requires the most warming up for me, and I'd say for most people. Uh, you know, back. There's not much that I need to work for back. Like my warm up for if I'm about to start a back day with like lat pull downs, the warm up is just light lat pull downs and gradually increasing the weight. Like I'm never, I never feel like my rotator cuffs are at risk or like my forearms need to be warmed up. It's like for some movements, the warm up is just the exercise that you're going to do, but lighter. Right? Same thing with like arms. When I warm up for tricep push downs, all I do is light tricep push downs and then work up and wait until I'm at my working weight and then start the working sets. Even legs, you know, for hamstrings, I hang out on the hamstring curl, lightish weight, go heavier, go heavier, get exposed to it, get warm, and then start the working weight. But chest, maybe it's just me, and I guess if you've got bulletproof shoulders, then you're good. But chest is where I'm probably the most, I've had the most frequent, like, tweaks. Uh, and not, like, muscle pulls, but, like, you know, doing... And this could just be because I had bad form, but doing incline with my shoulders or my elbows a little bit too flared out and like having some crunchy rotator, like to the point where for me to even do reps, I've heard it so bad where like going down, I can feel it like shit fucking hurts, you know, but ever since I've started implementing a lot of rotator cuff warm ups before I start any kind of pressing, I haven't had a shoulder issue. I have not had a shoulder issue for many months, many freaking months, and I definitely attribute it to you know, warming them up efficiently, or maybe not efficiently, but effectively, how about that? So good chest day, really fucking good pump. I was almost a little bit surprised. Maybe it was just because I haven't posed down in that locker room spot before, so maybe I looked different. Because you got to remember, look, the lighting in the mirror space and like whatever, it's going to play a serious role in your, like, perception of yourself. So don't get too upset if maybe one day your pump looks a little scrappier than the other day. And don't get too much of a big head if one day you try a new mirror spot or you turn on some fancy lighting and you're like, holy shit, oh, this is fucking crazy. Because you got to remember, when you're pumped up, that's not how you really look. That's how you look pumped, which is cool. But, you know, don't forget to add that pumped part. I think that's sort of the classic uh, mis under maybe not misunderstanding, but it's sort of a classic thought process of becoming accustomed to how you look at your peak, right? Like me, fully pumped up with the fucking chest veins coming out, especially when I'm extra lean and like there's I got triceps striations and all sorts of craziness. That's fucking killer, right? But I don't get upset when I wake up in the morning and I look at myself in the mirror. And there's no, like, shoulder striations, there's no pump, there's no nothing. You know, because I understand that's just a temporary state of being. And I think that's a pretty healthy way to go about it, right? If you can be accustomed to your normal state, like how you look when you're just walking around like a dude, uh, or, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you look at yourself in the mirror, shirtless, zero pump. When that's your normal, and you, that's how you see yourself normal, and then you get to see yourself in the gym fully pumped, and you're like, holy shit, this is badass. This is cool. This is a peek into the future if I keep continuing what I'm doing. And I think that's a better way to go about it. Is you, I, and if this is you, you got to rewire your brain. Because think of that situation I just said there and compare it to the guy who, like, rather than seeing himself pumped and thinking, dude, holy fuck, I'm pumped up. Right? Let's say when he sees himself pumped, he's not very enthusiastic about it. And when he sees himself unpumped, He's like, oh, what the fuck? Oh, I look like shit. Uh, oh, dude. Look, I'm not saying that you can't look like shit, right? Like, you can have a bit too much body fat on you. You can be kind of out of shape. But you shouldn't be saying that to yourself. Like, even if, you know, we took a dude, skinny fat, not really a huge lifter, uh, definitely not where he wants to be in terms of fitness goals. Right? And that's that's like an objective truth we can kind of get behind. Like he wants to improve, right? Do not beat yourself up in the process. Like, 
I, I mean, I can't understand it. It doesn't make sense to me, at least, to think constantly, like, oh, I look like shit. Oh, uh, yeah, but, well, my triceps look like total shit, you know. Yeah, my legs are pretty small. I mean, I got, fu I got shit legs. I what are you doing? Like, I mean, think about this legit. Are you, are you, is that going to hype you up? Is that going to make you excited to train them more? Like, it's just such a depressing outlook, man. Like, don't think about, and I know this is so cliche, it's so, like, stupid. Like, oh, I always think about the positive in things, not the negative. But, I mean, there's a reason why cliches are cliches. It's because they're fucking true, you know? So rather than, like, oh, dude, thinking about it, like, yeah, my quads are fucking small compared to my upper body. Fuck. Right? Instead of seeing that and being upset by it, right? Flip your mind around and be like, dude. I got a lot of work ahead of me, but once I get some big ass legs, this is going to be sick. Like, and I know it's easier said than done. It's not like you can just do that. But the more you can kind of think about that in kind of a little bit more of a motivating, kind of exciting way, dude, the more fun you're going to fucking have. Even when I have a shit lift, I feel like shit. Maybe I got trashy sleep, dehydrated because I had to like do a bunch of exams, or I procrastinated a bunch of homework so I had to catch up on it or whatever. Right? Even if I'm, like, not well prepped, once I finish the lift and I'm more pumped than I usually am, I still get a fucking little dopamine spike. I'm like, oh, yeah. And it's almost extra cool because I'm like, dude, the odds were kind of against me today. Even though, you know, I, I probably just should have been more responsible and you know, got my sleep and studied more responsibly with my time and whatever else. But let, let's not think about it like that. Right? Let's just say the odds were against me today, but... I still get a badass lift. And then, like, do a side chest. Come on. That is going to be way cooler. You know. The dudes who are killing it smile the biggest. And in a way, I think in some things in life, you can fucking fake it till you make it. So, every time you see your pump and you are legit pumped, be happy about it. Because you have done something to progress. And the more you do it, and the more excited you get about it, and just you're gonna be constantly increasing your effort level. You're probably gonna watch more videos about it and like learn more and fucking, you know, be, be a better lifter in general. Dude, come on. I, I did a whole rant about this before, right? I think out of anything in life, being good at something or kind of imp not even being good like relative to other people, like whatever, you know, fucking comparison is the thief of joy, but improving at something, right? And actually making gains which you recognize yourself and you realize there's a tangible result to you know a period of effort that you've been doing for maybe months or weeks or years right that's fucking fun so take with that what you will uh a lot of the times like when people when people post videos where it's about like you know self-improvement and like oh you know visualize where you want to be and manifest that ah, I mean, I love that shit, but I know it sounds kind of fucking cheesy, especially if you're kind of being, like, forced to listen to it. So, with this sort of thing, it's not something which you can kind of have pushed on you. You know, you sort of have to be motivated to be in that mindset already. So, whether or not you got a little fired up from this whole little rant, hopefully you did. That'd be fucking cool. But plan for tonight is go home and do some homework, which I put off all week. Uh, I'm going to have to stop at Kroger afterwards and get some steaks, some milk, some eggs. Uh, what else? I don't know what else. A variety of other treats for sure. You know, cram down a bunch of calories, proteins from good sources, meats, dairy products. Eggs. Love it. And then a variety of sweets and treats. I'm sure I might get a four-pack of uh, blueberry muffins. 450 calories each. And they'll probably all be gone before night's end. Before bedtime, I'm going to go from having a full pack of four muffins to zero. So, eat your food, do your lifts, do your cardio. You get the gist. I say this every time. Come on. I think we're starting to get the deal by now. I hope so, at least. So, that's all I got. I'll fucking see you tomorrow for... 
back day. And I might add, I might add side delts to back day. I'm not sure. Because I, um, I want wider delts for sure. Like from the front, I want my shoulders to be a bit rounder. In like a double bicep shot, my front delts peak up high enough. My rear delts are kind of low enough. Like I don't see it as a weak point. But bigger side delts would not mind. But then again, I guess I've also got to remember I wouldn't mind bigger everything. So that almost goes without saying. You know, after like two months of 5,000 calories out of nowhere, you know, my metabolism almost catches up to me in a way where it's like, okay, this is my new normal, uh, whatever, right? So in a sense, I like max out my, you know, calorie stimulus in a sense, or in a way, and, just, and then after like, you know, two months, two and a half months, I'm kind of just maintaining the same weight that I was at. So with this bulk, I did change it up a little bit. So these first three months, I haven't really been pushing the food that hard. Like, I've been eating in a surplus. I've gained weight. Uh, I went from, I think, the lowest weight when I started. It was like 230-something? 230? Not not more than 235 for sure. I think the starting weight was like 230... 230-something. Uh, Let's just say 233. And then now, you know, about three months later, 255, five pounds a month on just, you know, kind of eating as much as I'm hungry for, maybe pushing it a little bit up into 4,000, you know, three and a half thousand calorie range. But now I've been getting into, you know, five thousands, sometimes five and change if I'm a little bit extra crazy that day. So I'm going to really have to lock in because once you start eating a ton of food like this, and you're actually bulking and you're actually gaining weight. If you have a day where you miss your calorie mark and instead of eating, you know, your four and a half thousand, your 4,000 calories, your five, whatever, instead of hitting that goal, you only get in like, you know, maybe fucking, uh, let's just say 2,000 calories one day. Let's say you're extra busy with some shit. Uh, fuck me, you just couldn't eat. Or you were irresponsible, you didn't prep your meals. That's usually the, the take I have. I need to get a little better at that. But you'll wake up the next day, and if you're really fucking pushing it, and you're really bulked up and carved up, you can lose five pounds in a fucking day. Now, that's not five pounds of weight, you know, muscle. It's not five pounds of fat. It's just five pounds of intramuscular, you know, water and glycogen. And uh, as far as I'm educated, right... I see that muscle growth is going to happen the most consistently when you're fully fucking energized. You're full of carbs, right? You're eating in a calorie surplus. Your body has enough energy to use it responsibly right? and pack on some fucking contractile tissue and recover from your workouts. Of course, there's going to be a little bit of body fat gain or potentially a lot of body fat gain if you're eating too many calories. Uh, but, you know, that's just the nature of it, you know. I was talking to a couple guys in the gym today, and they're like, how do I gain muscle and lose fat at the same time? And I said, if I knew, I would do it, right? Why do you think I'm bulking up and cutting, you know? Uh, apart from, like, natural gains where, you know, you're a total noob when you can actually do body recomp. Look, anybody who says they're doing a, a recomp uh, and they think that they're gaining muscle and losing fat at the same time, have I got something to tell you? Have I got a little piece of information to tell you? That's not fucking happening. Right? Look, sure, somebody could maybe do it, like do a DEXA scan, and maybe they gained a pound. Maybe. Right? But I think your best approach is going to be understanding that in a bulking stage, in a bulking phase, right? you're gaining contractile tissue, you're putting muscle on your frame, but you're also you know, putting a little bit of fat on yourself too. Right? So the point of dieting in between bulks, if the end all, you know, goal of the whole, you know, back and forth is to gain muscle over time, is that the the bulk is to gain muscle and fat. And the cut is to just try to maintain the muscle and lose some fat. So at the end of a bulk and cut, like I've been doing, right, I bulk up, I gain some muscle and I gain some fat. And then in the dieting phase, I try to lose some of the fat that I put on, but hold on to the muscle, right? So at the end of that loop, I'm heavier than I was in the beginning. You know, I'll see people say, like, what's the point of bulking up and just cutting down? 
all you're doing is you're doing a yo-yo diet. You're just going back and forth. Now, that could be true if you stay the same weight every time. You know, if for whatever reason I just could not get heavier at the end of a bulk and a cut. So at the end of like, you know, a six or eight month process, maybe five month bulk, three month cut, I'm the exact same size as I was in the beginning. Then, yeah, you'd be right. There's no point. May as well just stay that lean size the whole time. But the fact that it does give me that extra fucking muscle with, you know, the uh, caveat of having to deal with some fat gain and some fat loss in between, that's what makes it worth it, right? So that's why I see the bulking and cutting method as working out pretty well for me. Now, of course, I have main gain for a while, too. I'm not, not knocking that. But you know, whatever you've got to do to gain muscle over time, I'd say lock in. Lock freaking in. And if you haven't tried bulking up, okay, what's stopping you? You may as well. You're not going to be any hungrier in a year than you are now. So I say, don't worry about putting a little bit of fat on, especially right now. It's fucking winter time. You're not walking around shirtless. Who gives a fuck? Right? Three months of bulking, you know, two months of dieting down, you're going to have a little bit more muscle for sure. As long as you're actually tracking your calories and training hard and, you know, doing it right. So I think that's... That's the end of my little speech there about my bulking, cutting rant. But no, that was a good arm day. Yeah, that's that's how I fucking like it. Going heavy. You guys are fucking social media is plaguing my mind with well you you really want to load up the fast twitch fibers with some uh, with some cable curls with a ten seconds come on. Curl fucking heavy. Feel it. Don't hurt yourself. Get a pump. Overcomplicating it is just adding, well, overcomplications. That's how I see it, at least. So, never hurts to simplify your routine. But don't worry. Or, I guess if you're excited to see me die down, then I guess, I guess you should worry, because this bulk is not ending anytime soon. Uh, I can almost guarantee... Yeah, I mean, fuck, it's probably going to hit at least the 200-day mark. Uh, I'm not saying that like I know exactly when I'm going to end it, but really, the only thing that's going to make me say, all right, it's time to cut down, is if I'm not gaining any more weight, and I haven't for like a month, right? And in that situation, of course, I'm going to try anything I can, diet-wise, sleep-wise, training-wise, to try to break through that plateau. But, you know, after you bulk for a while, you're going to get to a point where it's it's pretty hard to get the food down. You're actually pushing a lot of food, and you kind of hit the limit. And that's when you do a little factory reset, right? Cut the calories down. I drop them quick. I, don't, I do not see too much benefit in really easing into a dieting phase. Unless, I mean, I guess unless you're trying to go straight into like a bodybuilding show and really get every bit of muscle you can on your frame. Because I don't mind a little bit of um, you know, intramuscular fluid loss from a quick dieting phase, you know, because as soon as I drop from like my five and a half, five thousand calories to two thousand, in three days I'm going to lose ten pounds, and that's all intramuscular carbs and water, which, that's not muscle fiber, right, that's like saying, uh, that's like saying a balloon loses rubber when it, uh, when you deflate it, no man, the rubber is just the same there, it's just either extra full or a little bit flatter. Yeah, whether or not you, you know, get what I'm trying to say there, whatever, what freaking ever, so, what else is there to say, not freaking much, um, I think I'm gonna, yeah, I want to do some Epsom baths, I need to get a tub at my house, either like a plastic, like farm trough style one, or maybe like an inflatable one, because my apartment doesn't have a fucking bath. All it, ha all it has is a shower, right? And I want that fucking, I want that magnesium, what is, what's Epsom salt made of? Magnesium hepta sulfate? That, that totally might be right. Magnesium hepta, magnesium, whatever, it doesn't matter, right? I feel good after having an Epsom bath. And then, just taking a bath in general is fucking cool. I don't care how girly it is. So. 
keep training. I'm, uh, I think I'm going to try to get a little more progressive overload going. Not to the point where I'm trying to, like, you know, do one rep maxes or so, but, yeah, I got to get back to my roots. Mass moves mass, a.k.a. the more weight you're lifting, the bigger you're going to be. Now, of course, that's not completely true. There's guys half my size who can fucking bench more than me in my, uh, well, maybe not half my size, but there's guys much smaller than me who, in a one rep max, are stronger than me. Right? Strength doesn't always mean size, but size pretty much always means strength. So, heavy sets for upwards of eight reps, I think you're definitely in the hypertrophy range, especially if you're actually hitting legit failure. So, that's all I gotta fucking say. Oh, shit, I've drove for a while. Alright, I probably won't get canes then, I think I'll just get McDonald's. I'm not gonna drive all the way back there, that's freaking nuts. But, calories will keep increasing. Uh, I'll do a full day of eating soonish. I know I'm really bad at adding those in, but don't worry, I'll probably get one within the next few weeks, or the next week. Even if I say in the next week, I don't really have much, um, there's not really much stock behind those words, because I've said that forever. Like, I've said I'm going to do one in like a week, and then I don't do it for two months. But it'll happen, don't worry. I know, I know you love seeing me eat a bunch of treats and chocolate milk and cereal and steaks. Everybody loves freaking out about that. Oh, yeah. Oh, freaking yeah. Love it. So, tomorrow for legs, I'm sure I'm going to copy the same style. Hamstring curls will be pretty freaking brutish. Just fucking smacking the stack around and then trying to make sure I squat nice and heavy. Do some hard-ass sets of leg extensions. And I think you get the drill. You get the idea I'm trying to get at here. Look, I'm not saying it's not a good lift if you fucking, you know, just curl the 30s really slow and really control it, but look, I'm just judging this off of my own personal experience, and guess what? That's going to fucking supersede the fact that you're upset that, I'm not saying you, but just that somebody's upset that I'm doing a nasty set of dumbbell curls swinging them, you know? Not that I you know, care that people say that anyway. Right now is stop at Kane's, go home, chow down, probably eat some more food. I've got some muffins and some steaks in the fridge. Well, the muffins aren't in the fridge, but some steaks in the fridge too. So I think the rest of the night will look pretty much like this. Kane's, muffins, steaks. Something else that I don't know. I'll see. I'll freaking see. So, reasonably quality sources of protein, right? Chicken. I assume Cane's is actual chicken breasts or tenders or whatever. It's not just like ground up, you know, chicken feet and beaks and whatever else like a chicken nugget would be. And then steaks and a bunch of milk. I might even have to pick up a gallon on my way home. I had a half gallon last night. You know, at that rate, I mean, I'm gonna have to fucking re-up, but yeah, I think the bulk is just about kicking into gear. Not that I haven't been gaining weight, but this is, uh, I guess this is kind of worth going over. My last few bulks, what I've been doing is I do a little mini cut, like two months of dieting. I get, you know, moderately lean. I, I'm like a lean 230 or like a lean 220, like I was on the, on like two cuts ago, but you know, lean 230. And then what I would do is I would jump straight from like two and a half thousand calories to 5,000. And I'd have an instant spike in weight. You know, I'd go from 230 to like 250, but then I'm just locked in at like 250, like upper 240s, and I just can't push it beyond there. Uh, just because... Uh, I'm just going to keep talking. I'll do a loop around to the gates. But just because, uh, you know, after like two months of 5,000 calories out of nowhere... You know, my metabolism almost catches up to me in a way where it's like, okay, this is my new normal, uh, whatever, right? So in a sense, I like max out my, you know, calorie stimulus in a sense, or in a way. And, just, and then after like, you know, two months, two and a half months, I'm kind of just maintaining the same weight that I was at. So with this bulk, I did change it up a little bit. 
So these first three months, I haven't really been pushing the food that hard. Like, I've been eating in a surplus. I've gained weight. Uh, I went from, I think, the lowest weight when I started. It was like 230-something? 230? Not not more than 235 for sure. I think the starting weight was like 230... Uh, 230-something. Let's just say 233. And then now, you know, about three months later, 255 five pounds a month on just, you know, kind of eating as much as I'm hungry for, maybe pushing it a little bit up into 4,000, you know, three and a half thousand calorie range. But now I've been getting into, you know, five thousands, sometimes five and change if I'm a little bit extra crazy that day. So I'm going to really have to lock in because once you start eating a ton of food like this, then you're actually bulking and you're actually gaining weight. If you have a day where you miss your calorie mark, and instead of eating, you know, your four and a half thousand, your four thousand calories, your five, whatever, instead of hitting that goal, you only get in like, you know, maybe fucking, uh, let's just say two thousand calories one day. Let's say you're extra busy with some shit, uh, and fuck, you just couldn't eat, or you were irresponsible, you didn't prep your meals. That's usually the the take I have, I need to get a little better at that. But you'll wake up the next day, and if you're really fucking pushing it and you're really bulked up and carved up, you can lose five pounds in a fucking day. Now, that's not five pounds of weight, you know, muscle. It's not five pounds of fat. It's just five pounds of intramuscular, you know, water and glycogen. And uh, as far as I'm educated, right, I see that muscle growth is going to happen the most consistently when you're fully fucking energized. You're full of carbs, right? You're eating in a calorie surplus. Your body has enough energy to use it responsibly right? and pack on some fucking contractile tissue and recover from your workouts. Of course, there's going to be a little bit of body fat gain or potentially a lot of body fat gain if you're eating too many calories. Uh, but, you know, that's just the nature of it, you know. I was talking to a couple guys in the gym today and they're like, how do I gain muscle and lose fat at the same time? And I said, if I knew, I would do it, right? Why do you think I'm bulking up and cutting, you know? Uh, apart from, like, natural gains where, you know, you're a total noob when you can actually do body recomp. Look, anybody who says they're doing a, a recomp uh, and they think that they're gaining muscle and losing fat at the same time, have I got something to tell you? Have I got a little piece of information to tell you? That's not fucking happened, right? Look... Sure, somebody could maybe do it, like do a DEXA scan, and maybe they gained a pound, maybe, right? But I think your best approach is going to be understanding that in a bulking stage, in a bulking phase, right, you're gaining contractile tissue, you're putting muscle on your frame, but you're also, you know, putting a little bit of fat on yourself too, right? So the point of dieting in between bulks, if the end-all, you know, goal of the whole you know, back and forth, is to gain muscle over time, is that the, the bulk is to gain muscle and fat. And the cut is to just try to maintain the muscle and lose some fat. So at the end of a bulk and cut, like I've been doing, right, I bulk up, I gain some muscle and I gain some fat, and then in the dieting phase, I try to lose some of the fat that I put on, but hold on to the muscle, right? So at the end of that loop, I'm heavier than I was in the beginning. You know, I'll see people say like, what's the point of bulking up and just cutting down? All you're doing is you're doing a yo-yo diet. You're just going back and forth. Now that could be true if you stay the same weight every time. You know, if for whatever reason I just could not get heavier at the end of a bulk and a cut. So at the end of like, you know, a six or eight month process, maybe five month bulk, three month cut, I'm the exact same size as I was in the beginning then yeah, you'd be right. There's no point. May as well just stay that lean size the whole time. But the fact that it does give me that extra fucking muscle with you know, the uh, caveat of having to deal with some fat gain and some fat loss in between, that's what makes it worth it. right? So that's why I see the bulking and cutting method as working out pretty well for me. Now, of course, I have main gain for a while too. I'm not, not knocking that. But... Whatever you've got to do to gain muscle over time, I'd say lock in. Lock freaking in. And if you haven't tried bulking up, okay, what's stopping you? 
You may as well. You're not going to be any hungrier in a year than you are now. So I say, don't worry about putting a little bit of fat on, especially right now. It's fucking winter time. You're not walking around shirtless. Who gives a fuck? Right? Three months of bulking, you know, two months of dieting down, you're going to have a little bit more muscle for sure. As long as you're actually tracking your calories and training hard and, you know, doing it right. So I think that's, that's the end of my little speech there about my bulking, cutting rant. But no, that was a good arm day. Yeah, that's, that's how I fucking like it. Going heavy. You guys are fucking, social media is plaguing my mind with, well, you, you really want to load up the fast twitch fibers with some, uh, with some cable curls with a 10 seconds, come on, curl fucking heavy, feel it, don't hurt yourself, get a pump. Overcomplicating it is just adding, well, overcomplications. That's how I see it at least. Never hurts to simplify your routine. But don't worry. Or I guess if you're excited to see me diet down, then I guess, I guess you should worry because this bulk is not ending anytime soon. Uh, I can almost guarantee. Yeah, I mean, fuck, it's probably going to hit at least the 200 day mark. Uh, I'm not saying that like I know exactly when I'm going to end it. But really, the only thing that's going to make me say, all right, it's time to cut down is if I'm not gaining any more weight, and I haven't for like a month, right? And in that situation, of course, I'm going to try anything I can, diet-wise, sleep-wise, training-wise, to try to break through that plateau. But, you know, after you bulk for a while, you're going to get to a point where it's, it's pretty hard to get the food down, you're actually pushing a lot of food, and you kind of hit the limit. And that's when you do a little factory reset, right? Cut the calories down. I drop them quick. I, don't, I do not see too much benefit in really easing into a dieting phase. Unless, I mean, I guess unless you're trying to go straight into like a bodybuilding show and really get every bit of muscle you can on your frame. Because I don't mind a little bit of um, you know, intramuscular fluid loss from a quick dieting phase. You know, Because as soon as I drop from like my five and a half, five thousand calories to 2,000, in three days I'm going to lose 10 pounds. And that's all intramuscular carbs and water, which that's not muscle fiber, right? That's like saying uh, that's like saying a balloon loses rubber when it uh, when you deflate it. No, man, the rubber is just the same there. It's just either extra full or a little bit flatter. Yeah, uh, whether or not you you know get what I'm trying to say there. Whatever, what freaking ever. So. What else is there to say? Not freaking much. Um, I think I'm gonna... Yeah, I want to do some Epsom baths. I need to get a tub at my house. Either like a plastic like farm trough style one. Or maybe like an inflatable one. Because my apartment doesn't have a fucking bath. All it, ha all it has is a shower. Right? And I want that fucking... I want that magnesium... What is... What's Epsom salt made of? Magnesium... Hepta sulfate. That that totally might be right. Magnesium hepta. Magnesium, whatever, it doesn't matter, right? I feel good after having an Epsom bath, and then just taking a bath in general is fucking cool. I don't care how girly it is. So. Keep training. I'm. Uh, I think I'm gonna try to get a little more progressive overload going. Not to the point where I'm trying to, like, you know, do one rep maxes or so, but, yeah, I gotta get back to my roots. Mass moves mass, a.k.a. the more weight you're lifting, the bigger you're gonna be. Now, of course, that's not completely true. There's guys half my size who can fucking bench more than me in my, uh, well, maybe not half my size, but there's guys much smaller than me who, in a one rep max, are stronger than me. Right? Strength doesn't always mean size, but size pretty much always means strength. So, heavy sets for upwards of eight reps, I think you're definitely in the hypertrophy range, especially if you're actually hitting legit failure. So, I think that's all I gotta fucking say. Oh shit, I've drove for a while. Alright, I probably won't get canes then, I think I'll just get McDonald's. I'm not gonna drive all the way back there, that's freaking nuts. But, calories, 
will keep increasing. Uh, I'll do a full day of eating soonish. I know I'm really bad at adding those in, but don't worry, I'll probably get one within the next few weeks or the next week. Even if I say in the next week, I don't really have much. Um, there's not really much stock behind those words because I've said that forever. Like I've said, I'm going to do one in like a week, and then I don't do it for two months. But it'll happen. Don't worry. I know. I know you love seeing me eat a bunch of treats and chocolate milk and cereal and steaks. Everybody loves freaking out about that. But that's all I got. Good lift. It's only 8.20. I get a good night's rest tonight. Uh, I don't think I have to wake up early tomorrow, though. So even better. But, yeah, that's all I got. So, think about doing your cardio. I hope you would try doing it. Train hard, eat your food. We all get the drill. We all get the freaking drill. So, I'll see you tomorrow for what I'm hoping is going to be an absolutely gnarly fucking lick day. I don't know if you know anything about MATLAB, but if you do, then maybe you can understand my pain. Yikes. But honestly, it wasn't that bad. There was kind of, um, so there's sort of two schools of thought when it comes to computer coding like that, I guess. There's like actually typing out specific codes. I guess that's more the pro level shit. But then there's, they sort of simplified into a kid's version where everything is like little blocks and you connect them with lines. That's sort of what this class is going to be about, which is good for me because when it comes to anything coding wise, not a pro, not a pro, but plan is chest. Uh, so how long has it been since I actually pulled it? Uh, if you're, if you're not aware, I think it was like three weeks ago, maybe a month. A month might be pushing, but somewhere in that 20, 30 days ago-ish range. No, no, it must have been a month. But I'm doing like four plates on Incline Smith because I felt super strong that day. And on like the sixth rep, once I got into the hole and started pressing up, I finished the rep, of course, but I could tell I pulled something intramuscular. I had a little muscular tear. Not brutal. Like I'd say usually, as long as you don't have any bruising, you're not completely wrecked, but it was definitely to the point where I did not do any more chest that day. That day turned completely into a back day. But now I think I'm pretty much recovered. I'd say, like, I'm still a little bit careful. I'm not gonna load up like four plates on incline barbell, no spotter. I have done that in the past. Even the thought of it right now fucking scares me. But, 315 is well within my wheelhouse again. So now all I gotta do is make sure I don't re-injure myself by doing anything stupid. Which I think I'm kind of on a little bit of a track of improvement when it comes to my, let's just say longevity. Because I'm kind of starting to see a little bit more benefit in lighter weight sets for, well, just lighter weight sets, you know? like really what's going to give me a bigger chest, right? Doing a set of four plates with like seven reps, maybe seven, honestly probably more like six, and then moving on or doing like three sets with 315, and each one is a failure at like 12. It's like there's a limit where, am I a power lifter? No, I'm trying to just bodybuild, stimulate my muscles, get a gnarly pump, and doing insanely heavy weight, right to the point where it's not necessary, I'm starting to kind of understand that. So, this chest day, I'm not sure what it'll look like. We're going to a, a, a gym that's a little bit out of the way. We're going out of the Shire for this one. Uh, so this gym's pretty fully fledged. A lot of gearheads floating around. Uh, it, it's pretty serious. Every piece of equipment you could fucking imagine. Uh, so, I'm sure I'll end up making use of, just by guessing, Smith machine, incline barbell, machine press, heck deck, cable flies, somewhere in there. Maybe I'll take a few out, add a few, but chest is never really a hard lift for me to, you know, have to really grind through. As long as whatever movement I'm doing feels good, I could be doing incline bench, Smith, uh, really whatever. So I'm not so picky when it comes to chest. 
And honestly, I'm not so picky when it comes to the variations or the specific exercises for chess either. I'd be perfectly satisfied of a chess day with just an inclined bench and some cables for flies. But then I also like doing maybe two sets of inclined bench, two sets of inclined dumbbell. It's like there's a limit where, am I a power lifter? No, I'm trying to just bodybuild, stimulate my muscles, get a gnarly pump, and doing insanely heavy weight, right to the point where it's not necessary, I'm starting to kind of understand that. So this chest day, I'm not sure what it'll look like. We're going to a, a, a gym that's a little bit out of the way. We're going out of the Shire for this one. Uh, so this gym's pretty fully fledged. A lot of gearheads floating around. Uh, it, it's pretty serious. Every piece of equipment you could fucking imagine. So, I'm sure I'll end up making use of, just by guessing, Smith Machine, Incline Barbell, Machine Press, Heck Deck, Cable Flies, somewhere in there. Maybe I'll take a few out, add a few, but chest is never really a hard lift for me to, you know, have to really grind through. As long as whatever movement I'm doing feels good, I could be doing Incline Bench, Smith, uh, really whatever. So I'm not so picky when it comes to chest. And honestly, I'm not so picky when it comes to the variations or the specific exercises for chest either. I'd be perfectly satisfied of a chest day with just an inclined bench and some cables for flies. But then I also like doing maybe two sets of inclined bench, two sets of inclined dumbbell, two sets of machine press, like some pack tech and then some cable flies and just doing like a ton of different movements. When it comes down to people like I, I feel like I keep saying this in every little car talk, but it's still I still feel like it warrants mentioning. I'll see somebody like, oh, I'm doing, I'm doing a chest workout with the hammer. Should I do more machines or should I do more free weights? I, I'm doing the Arnold split. Is that going to work? You know, you're kind of losing. I think you're losing sight of the big picture. That doesn't really matter. Whatever split you do, as long as you got like, you're hitting everything twice a week ish. <laughs> As long as you go hard, it's probably going to fucking work. You know, I say this every time. There's dudes who are huge. And I'm not even huge. You don't have to be a fucking total freak. But guys who get results doing completely different workouts. If there's calisthenics dudes floating around. Just pull-ups, planges, you know, uh, planks. Doing some, all sorts of crazy just pull-up, uh, you know, playground workouts. And the dude's fucking yoked. Do you think it's because pull-ups are just the most effective back movement ever and like push-ups are the greatest chest activating movement ever? No, it's just because whatever they're doing, they're doing it hard, they're recovering, and then they're going to get results. So before you try to get into any kind of nitty-gritty, real detail work, just remember that that sort of thing, like when you're really changing the small details of your training, you're only, <laughs> you're only adjusting, I'd say maybe 5% of your results. The other 95%, uh, let's just say the training itself, not including sleep and supplementation and recovery and like diet, but just the training itself, I'd say your effort and the actual intensity and like how hard you can make your sets, that's gonna account for 95 fucking percent of it. And the other 5% is like your exercise selection. It might not be that steep, but I hope you sort of just understand I'm trying to say go hard. I did a whole rant in the last, on the way back from the gym, where I was getting kind of like riled up, seeing comments about, like, oh, you should leave a couple reps in the tank, you really shouldn't train that hard. Does that make any sense to you? Does that make any logical sense? Oh, don't train too hard, man. You don't want to get too big. You don't want to get too strong, do you? Oh, you don't want to get too lean, come on. You, oh, you don't want to bench that much. Are you serious? Come on. What kind of mentality is that? Two syllables. Loser.